to speak something so intense and <laughs> in in an when in one hour i don't understand that yeah i really don't get it um can we just pray father i want you to just come have your way have your way lord have your way have your crazy time in this place god please please even as you teach us even as you encourage us from the word have your way god have your way in jesus name amen overwhelming obsession think about that what is obsession come on you need to talk to me all right just because i can't walk that does you know if you don't talk then i'll come right in front of you all right <laughs> what is obsession hm sorry addiction okay yes close extreme love what else obsession passion all right yes possessiveness mm come on we're getting there possessiveness next madness madness going really mad yeah yeah obsession come on anxious like waiting you mean madly waiting for something great something crazy you're anxious you can't wait for it but you want it now yes yes what else obsession affection affection multiplied into infinity obsession yeah something to do with something that you cannot do without amen come on something that you cannot do without it's 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 <laughs> it's it's crazier than uh addiction you know it's crazier than addiction see when you're not in your normal sense you're addicted to something but in your normal sense you cannot you're not able to go about something you know that's obsession think about it all right what has that got to do with this today let's study so i just want we are having how many days 21 days of fasting and prayer uh three preachers have already preached wow how was it awesome, awesome? yeah so today i dis- i decided to join and fast with you all too so i am also on fasting with you all all right so we knit together in the spirit amen yeah so tell me what is prayer you've been praying so what is prayer talking to god all right what else now give me talking to god is such a hi god yeah nice have a great day yeah bye so that is talking to god so tell me what is prayer give me a better definition get deeper come on get getting connected to god somebody said intimately involved in your conversations with god mm. communion with god okay hmm prayer come on god talking to you do you believe that's prayer woo yes or no yes sir spending time spending time with god what time little bit of time 5 minutes half an hour so we see today our everything about the sermon should be there okay everything about our conversation is not neutral everyone say loudly obsession, obsession. going mad all right i want mad 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 crazy crazy answers even if you're not there in your spirit walk talk it out all right because you're going to speak life and it's going to come to fulfillment amen amen, amen. amen. whoever is anointed by the lord if the lord's hand is on you you are not a false prophet amen Amen. So you're going to prophesy and you're going to prophesy the glory of God in in and through your life, all right? So tell me what is prayer? Come on, better igna- examples, better definitions. Good. Come on. What is prayer? Sister, what is prayer? Feeling the heart of God. Feeling the heart of God. Mm, wow. Next. Come on. Communication. Next. your entire lifestyle hmm give me a word for that intimacy all right next getting the truth yes one word you saw my notes tell say that again 
disconnecting from everything and getting connected with god whoa your your church is going crazy all right <laughs> by the way whoever did this did an amazing job come on give it up to your church really <laughs> see when you clap right don't be lousy do a good job come on yeah <laughs> offended or right <laughs> come on tell me love next <laughs> how about passion what is passion can prayer be passion hmm what is passion hmm passion is a drive in your life that that gives you the reason to exist and not just exist but to live out loud Yes when you wake up in the morning you just don't get up do your breakfast and just go to you know that's not you know that's living that's called existing that's called probably living all right but when you're passionate you're passionate about something that gives you reasons to wake up in the morning gives you reasons to do what you do gives you reasons to come here and do what you do no matter what you're going through because you know what i'm telling you with me so prayer is actually passion you with me If you're telling your entire lifestyle should be prayer, all right? I am telling you you should rename it and say passion. Probably then you will your 5 minutes, your half an hour will change. It will be every day going crazy. You you can't live one day without him. Amen. Yeah. Today's entire worship set was passionate. Have you noticed it? Yeah. Yeah, you with me? Yes or no? What is passion? <laughs> Come on, come on. We need to go fast. Come on. What desire? I like that. Deep desire. What else? Intense feeling. Yes. Madly in love. There's a dictionary version of it which says strong and uncontrollable emotion. Mm. <laughs> Now tell me, is your talking to God a strong and an uncontrollable emotion? when it is strong and uncontrollable that means you 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 know you can't help but be in communion every single ounce of your life every iota of your life is just obsessed with that man you know what i'm telling you're talking to him and you talk to somebody because you get to know that person right song of solomon 86 read that with me come on place me like a seal over your heart like a seal on your arm your love is as strong as death woo it's jealousy unyielding as a grave it burns like blazing fire like a mighty flame woo song of songs is written by solomon right right one of the greatest one of the wisest you need to you know i'll tell you something about being in high place right when you elevated to be a position of a king or for example moses he was a head he was like the father of the entire nation of israel you know every day there was death in the camp hey wake up you know every day at least thousands will die and he will have to bury them you with me all right and that wisdom has passed on and solomon in his high position in his lofty wisdom he sees a kingdom having a he's noticed something about death it is an uncontrollable emotion it is demanding you with me yeah and he goes on to feel that he describes love is as strong as death woo i don't know is there something called a death minister in india no ministry of death no ministry of women child no no death no sure <laughs> who keeps a record of you know every day death is so demanding you with me yeah and death is a painful emotion anybody lost in your life come on have you lost people in your life one death has shaken has shaken your life right just imagine thousands of it it's a it's a very painful thing right and he's he's telling love is as strong as death demanding as the grave wow if passion is an uncontrollable emotion and if and if an uncontrollable emotion is compared to death and love that means love is passion 
Yes or no? You with me? We're just journeying. I just want you to journey with me. Yeah? Yes? Right. Yeah? Right. Amen. <laughs> the woman in the scripture, go to Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 7, 7 and 8. Read that. She's telling daughters, read with me, come on loudly. Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you by the gazelles and by the does of the field, do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. You know what, you know what, she, you know what she's trying to say? She's telling that love is very passionate. It is as strong and commanding and demanding as death. So I charge you, don't awaken love until it is ready to be awoken. Woo! Come on, think about it. Yeah? If love is passion and if passion is prayer, <laughs> think, think, come on. Now we can understand, you know, David had a passion, amen? He had communed with the Lord. He had fallen crazily in love with God. He had a passion. He said, I will not sleep or slumber until I have built a temple for my God. Amen? Turn to 1 Kings chapter 5, verse 3 to 5. This is his son, all right? So his son, David's son, Solomon is saying, you know that because of the wars waged against my father David from the... He could not build a temple for the name of the Lord, his God, until the Lord put his enemies under his feet. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. There is no adversary or disaster. So he says, I intend therefore to build a temple for the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord told my father David when he said, your son whom I will put on the throne in your place will build a temple for my name. And you know what? Solomon fulfills it and there's a reply that God gives. How many of you want to hear God's reply? Yeah? Come on, let's journey. First Kings chapter 9 verse 3. Read with. The Lord said, I have heard the prayer. Come on. Come on. Can we replace that word prayer to your passion? Yeah? Come on. I have heard the passion and the plea you have made before me. I have consecrated this temple which you have built by putting my name there forever. Read that. Come on. My eyes and my heart will always be there. Woo! Your prayer, the prayer that you know what you're doing here is just an outcome of what is supposed to be your lifestyle, you know. This prayer is so powerful because when you pray, when it, you pray the way it's supposed to be prayed, when your lifestyle is passionate, his eyes and his heart will always be there. Woo! What kind of a lifestyle is that? Where his eyes and his heart is always there. Come on. You're getting a picture of a God that's becoming almost mad. Scary even, right? Somebody whose eyes and whose heart are always on you. You get me, right? I'm staring at Finney. <laughs> always on you. Even when you sleep, I will not sleep. You know what I'm telling? You're getting me? <laughs> because prayer is passion. Come on, everyone say that. Prayer is passion. Prayer is great love. Come on. So my question to you is, if prayer is passion, then what is fasting prayer? Come on, we're going to get crazy tonight. Amen? 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 Come on, wake up, yeah? If prayer is crazy passion, then what is fasting and prayer? Want to get there? Yes? Look at your neighbor and say, get ready, come on. We're going to go into a journey, come on. It's loudly, say that, come on, we're going to get into a journey. A roller coaster right into the heart of God. Come on. 
You don't know roller coaster ride? Okay. <laughs> a roller coaster ride into the heart of God. Come on. Woo! Give the Lord a big hand. Come on. Woo! <laughs> Jesus said, Matthew 6, 17 to 18, all right? He said this, when you fast, okay, let me tell you something about Jesus. He is the son of God. He is the perfect man, sinless being. He walked all the offices perfectly, which means he was a perfect prophet. He was a perfect teacher. He was a perfect evangelist. He was a perfect apostle. He was a perfect pastor, all right, shepherd. You with me? He walked his office perfectly. That means everything that came out of his mouth was perfect. Amen? And we're going to listen to what he said. He said, when you fast, now we're going to look at this just, just as a statement, all right? Put oil on your head and wash your face so that you will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, all right? So it won't be obvious to others that you're fasting, but only to your father who is unseen and your father who sees you, what, you, what is done in secret will reward you. Read that again. When you fast, all right, put oil on your head. Say, put oil on your head. Oil. Say, stay anointed. Come on, say, stay anointed. And wash your face. Come on. So that you will not be obvious to others. So it won't be obvious to others. But only to your father. Is it making sense? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I love how it ends. The father who sees you and what is done in secret will reward you. What do you think is the reward of fasting? Come on. Deeper intimacy. Depends on what you're fasting for, right? So why do you fast, brother? Why do you fast? Why do we all fast? Come on. I know Pastor Puruji has taught you this. Why do we fast? To disconnect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next. Why do we fast? Come on. Brother there, behind. Come on. I'm going to catch everyone. Why do we fast, Finney? Why do we fast? Why do we fast? To crucify our flesh. And you said something here. Yeah. To get something from God. <laughs> do you believe that? To break patterns. All right. What does fasting do to you? Answer me. Hmm? It gives you overwhelming victory. How? Makes you rely on his presence all the time. How? Say that again. Let the spirit man take control. How? To have intimacy with God. So you fast. How? So when you fast, you rely on him. How? <laughs> Your focus is shifted and it's on God. How? Denying yourself. Awesome. How would you do that? <laughs> so you said something. Okay, you forgot. This side, come on. To know and use what, so what has God given you? Uh huh. We, you need to fast. Okay. Awesome. I learned something new today. <laughs> right. Brother. To become weak in the flesh and, and strengthen your spirit. How? How are you going to strengthen your spirit? By? By praying more. How by praying more will you become? <laughs> okay, so as you pray, you become, as you pray? So without communicating, you're not going to say something. Okay, so, so that's why we fast? So what was the question? So why do we fast, right? Mm. Sacrifice, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me, all right. Um, 
if jesus is telling hey when you're fasting get excited man it's jesus nlg version of jesus words all right when you're fasting get excited man put some hair gel you know look cool because it's crazy because you know what it's actually a crazy crazy place to be in and you'll be like really why jesus you with me he's trying to tell you can you reach a place in your life right where you become so madly obsessed that it overwhelms you that you forget your basic necessity which is to eat so when you say i'm going to fast fasting is not a decision that you take come on tell that to your friend fasting is not a decision if today is your decision it is going to become a crazy pattern of of victorious living amen hey come on come on come on you know we you just don't fast food you fast everything good in your life because you're become madly obsessed with something called a great love is it making sense you you're getting married today is tomorrow's your wedding day you're looking at your you know wife's uh, would be his photo you forget to eat you know what I mean? it happens right recently i had my one of my first batch interns he was getting married <laughs> we went for his wedding day so when we as soon as we went for the wedding day like some fellas walking around here then i saw hey it's your wedding man he's walking with t-shirt he is so obsessed that he has not eaten nor has he slept did he did he decide that or oh, because i'm going to get married i'm going to get excited so i will fast making sense making sense fasting what <laughs> i don't know man <laughs> it's just a joyful crazy place to be in that you forget food and every and you just begin to indulge to the point of being in a place of obsession woo you getting me are you getting me <laughs> let me tell you this I am obsessed with Pastor Prajee. I really actually I really love him, all right? I I really look up to him. And ah it's okay. Um, my eyes are on you. <laughs> so I love him and I love him so much that I keep watching his lifestyle, all right? Until without my knowledge it becomes my lifestyle. I'm doing everything that he is doing, all right? Going wherever he is going. You don't know what I'm telling, all right? To the point that that even when priji is not around i am so busy becoming like him without thinking about him and i've forgotten to be the forgotten to cater to my basic needs you get me Amen. and without my knowledge i have entered a fruit called fasting who you become obsessed with jesus with his beauty with his love <laughs> with his everything about him that you have gone into a place that it's just about him that you've forgotten to sleep you've forgotten to eat and without your knowledge you're already living a fruit of intimacy called fasting woo basically another word for it is you are setting everything apart nazariting things that give you pleasure because you find pleasure in the greater love than all the other little loves in your life woo come on come on come on come on prayer itself is a crazy place to be in prayer itself is a passionate place and when you fast and you pray it is a mad place are you getting me you getting me you becoming as mental and demented as the holy god that we worship it's literally like telling that verse and i will keep my eyes and my face on you that i forget everything woo are you getting me mm. <laughs> you know in the bible just like y'all all right just like all of you there's a community that has fasted right Ezra during the days of Ezra they all came back they fasted from the little children to the elder people they fasted they prayed they cried you know why because they felt that is that Jerusalem the city of God was their greater love than their basic necessity you know what i'm telling and they fasted and told God we want that place 
So when they're not telling I'm fasting, no, it is just like something they just gather together and they don't want to do anything because Jerusalem. Think about it. Jonah, when he went and he said, 40 more days, 40 days, right? And Nineveh will be overturned. In three days, he went to the city and he prophesied. The minute the king heard the news, from the king to the slightest baby and all cattle fasted for 40 days. Do you know that? Because they had a great love called Nineveh. Yeah? Yeah? I know why you as a church are fasting. Because you have a great love, which is the name of your church. Bangalore Revival Center. You have a great love called Bangalore. Yes? I have a great love. The country of my birth. The city of my birth. It's going to dogs nowadays. Amen? Amen. Yeah? That's truth, right? Yeah, we have an atrocious government. We have everything that's going wrong. There is no justice for our women. Amen. There is no justice for our children. Yes. Come on. As worshippers, we need to be bold and we need to roar out what we see. Amen. Yeah. Our people are attacked. Not just our. Any. You know, there is no equality in India right now. We are living in testing and trying times. And if suddenly you as a church or you as an individual are found sitting and weeping and crying in the middle of the night and during the day and just praying for Bangalore, without your knowledge, you have become, you're taking the fruit of fasting. You know what I'm telling? You didn't make an effort, oh, I'm going to fast for Bangalore. No, it comes from a lazy place called passion, obsession, which gives you the fruit, where you disregard what gives you pleasure because you have a greater love than your basic necessity of life. Amen? Yes or no? Yeah? <laughs> Close your eyes with me. Father... Even as we delve a little more deeper tonight, I pray nobody will get distracted, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray nobody in this room will get distracted. Nobody watching online will get distracted because this is your holy word. This is your holy word, God. Amen. 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 You with me, people? You with me? Yeah? I'm very scared to go to the next place. Just pray with me in the spirit. Come on, just pray with me in the spirit. Come on, keep praying, keep praying. Just prepare your heart for this, come on. When David fasted and prayed, he didn't say, I'm going to fast and pray. He had a crazy love. The love, the child that he had with Bathsheba. Yes? And he was praying, God, do not take the child away. Come on, wake up, people. Yeah? You with me? When Mordecai, he tore his clothes the minute he heard his people are going to get killed, he put sackcloth and he started praying and wailing because he had a great love, the remnant. Yes? Yes? Tell me, yeah? Israel is already destroyed. A little is left. I have love for that. Amen? You will not touch that. No? I, th you're with me? <laughs> when Esther fasted, wow. I want to just pause on Esther's story and and from here I want to go into a place that's really crazy, all right? Esther 4, 14. Come on, let's read that together. Come on. Read that, everyone. Come on. If you remain silent, wait a minute. His, Esther's cousin brother, Mordecai, is telling this to Esther, all right? Telling, you need to open your mouth now, all right? So he's telling, if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. Esther had a love. Amen? She, 
and was okay she had great love and she had love for her family you need to understand esther was an orphan a slave what she had little left with she was holding close mordecai her little family you with me but mordecai is admonishing her telling you have a love it is your great love right that's why you're keeping quiet yeah yes and he's challenging her something and today the spirit of god in the form of mordecai mordecai means mer everyone say mer you know what's mer it's a beautiful incense you know what's incense it's a symbol of prayer all right today the spirit of the spirit of prayer that that the holy spirit churns in this room is challenging you something ready for it mordecai is telling hey i know you have a great love and it is your family even i'm part of that you know but hey you know what it will perish but relief will come for the greater love than what you think and i i love i love the transition as the goes through today that will be our pattern we are going to change tonight amen, amen. esther chapter 4 verse 16 come on she says go gather together all the jews who are in susa and fast for me do not eat do not drink for 3 days nor night or day i and my attendants will also fast how many days 3 days and 3 nights when this is done i will go to the king come on ah <laughs> she has lost the love that she has for her great love her family and she has adopted a greater love the jews hey wake up yeah and she's telling when this is done i will go to the king it's against the law even though it is against the law if i perish i perish you're with me an obsession an obsessive passion you know what i'm telling she's gone crazy and she's telling you know what if i perish i perish Esther chapter 5 verse 1 to 4. Let's read this. Come on. On the third day Esther put on her royal robes. She stood in the inner court of the palace in front of the king's hall. The king was sitting on his royal throne in the hall facing the entrance. When he saw the queen standing in the court, he was pleased with her. Woo! You with me? Something has changed about this Esther that pleased the king. wait for it it gets deeper all right he does not kill her but he's pleased with her he held out her golden scepter that was in his hand so esther approached touched the tip of the scepter next the king asked what is it queen esther what is your request even up to half the kingdom it will be given to you tell me you with me her great love was the jews half the kingdom because they spread all over amen she got her request yes or no yes. her crazy you know love that she's gone into the prayer more that she's gone into has got her request right yes or no yes. but what does she do if it pleases the king replied esther let the king together with the enemy come today for a banquet i have prepared for him Hey, wait a minute. Today your great love is the city of Bangalore. And you get an audience in front of the king of kings. Amen. Because of your crazy passion, because the Lord saw, just like he saw the Ninevites, don't care about food, but they're caring, caring about Nineveh. In the same way this God is seeing BRC, he's this church is crazy for the Bangalore city. they're not they forgotten food they forgotten everything you know and god says hey brc i'm here what do you want what will you do come on and god is telling not just for bangalore i will give you entire south india overnight i can turn it into a christian nation what do you want what will you do what will you do pastor what will you do grab a chance grab a chance grab a chance esther didn't wow today 
the meaning of what you're going to do for 21 days is going to change. Hey, wake up. The meaning of what you're going to do for 21 days has already started is going to change. Amen? Go, uh, go to Esther chapter 5 verse 7. The king comes to her banquet. Amen? Everyone say, the king comes. The king is not, she's not in the king's palace. The king has come to her house. Woo! The king is here. You with me? And you know what she does? When the king has come to her banquet, in, go on, come on. She said, this is my request. Free the Jews. No? Go. Next verse. Is it there? It's all right. We'll read it. Can somebody read it? <laughs> it's all right. You know what she says? If it pleases the king, <laughs> after this, go check it out, all right? You know what she says? She says, let the king and Haman come again. Hey, something has changed. Wake up, wake up. People, something has changed. Yes? And you know what I like? Esther chapter 6 verse 1. The king goes home. That night, the king could not sleep. Woo! I don't know, are you getting it? That night, the king could not sleep. If you read the story, the king could not sleep so much that he's like, what's wrong? You know, this woman has got my attention two times and she's still not asking me what she wants. What does she want? Hey, come on. Come on. Yes? 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 It's almost brought tears to me and I think I might cry. I don't know. She had a great love called the Jews. <laughs> her people. Yeah? And the lives of her people. But when she was in the moment of getting things done for her people, she pauses and she falls head over heels in love with the one she is pledged and married to. Yes? She's like, I'm not going to grab on this chance. I'm going to get a greater love than the love that I already have. Woo! With me? Moses. He got millions of people out into the desert, right? He went on top of the mountain. <laughs> I don't know if I, could, I can do this, man. It's just getting crazier. Go to Exodus chapter 24, verse 18. Are you ready for this, people? Yeah? Moses entered the cloud because God calls him. And you know what happens to him? He entered the cloud and as he went on the mountain top, he stayed. Woo! He stayed on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Go to the next verse, Prajee. Exodus 34, 28. Moses was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. How was he there? Come on, read it. Without eating bread or drinking water and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant go to Deuteronomy 9.9 9. he's telling about his great memory all right he's telling now when I went up to the mountain to receive the tablets I stayed on that mountain for 40 days and 40 nights Woo! he could have just gone and come back right hey wake up yeah and he didn't care. He just stayed 40 days, 40 nights. I ate no bread, drank no water. Verse 11. At the end of the 40 days and 40 nights, the Lord gave me two stone tablets. Amen? <laughs> 25. I lay prostrate before the Lord those 40 days and 40 nights because the Lord had said he would destroy you. Woo! Think, think. Come on, something is... Deuteronomy 10.10. 10. Now, I had stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights as I did the first time. And the Lord listened to me at this time also. It was not his will to destroy you. Woo! Come on. Are you with me? 
Are you with me? Yes. Moses had a great love. Let my people go. Yes? But when he got his people and he encountered the beauty of God, he stayed. He got mesmerized. He became mad. I love this, how Cha puts it. He looks at the Israelites. He looked at God. He looks at the Israelites. He looked at God. He looked at the Israelites and he saw what they saw. He saw that they were worshipping God because God was useful. But when he looked at God, he worshipped God because God was beautiful. At that moment, for Esther, that beauty of that glorious king sitting on the throne was a useful king. But she traded that to fall in love with him. Hey, come on. Come on, come on. Today, you know, I know God is here. I know he's, if you were to stretch your hand and ask, even so much if I could say, God, stretch my leg, I want to walk, I know I will. But you know what? I have a greater love than my own body. That is you. I have a greater love than this church. I have a greater love than the needs of my country. And that is you tonight. Woo! Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Can such a love exist? Yes, it can. There can be a mad love between man and God. It is a possibility. Don't live a mediocre life. Can you love God exactly the way he loves you? Yes, you can. Because you were created like him in form, in image, and even in the crazy, crazy attribute that he is. You can love God. That's why he commands you, if you don't believe, love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Come on. Come on. Come on. And you know what? Just to show you the extent of your capacity and your compassion and your passion that you can have for him, he will go let you go through problems. He will put problems in your life so that when you reach your end and grab your miracle, he will say, hey, there is something here. You can have me instead of that. Woo! And you know what? You will be in a place to take it. Esther took it. Moses took it. Wow, wow, come on, come on, come on. I don't know if you're getting it. <laughs> I really don't know if you're getting it. I don't know if you have that verse. First Chronicles 28, 5 and 7. It should be there somewhere down there. First Chronicles 28, 5 and 7. No? After Deuteronomy 17 and 18, is it there? First Chronicles 28, 5 to 7. It's all right. <laughs> this is God telling David, all right? Bear with me. People, God looked at David and he said, David, you will not build me a temple. But your son, whom I have taken as my son, and I have called him by my name, my son, he will build me a temple, or rather a court. Everyone say court. Say court. <laughs> and the same anointing falls on Jesus. Matthew chapter 4, verse 2. See that. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus was hungry. Amen? And we all know, even in that hunger, he was more hungry for God than what the enemy had to give him. Woo! I need to tell you this. Jesus was so crazy that he fasted, he prayed, that he didn't fast, fast and pray. He just went, like, I don't want food or water. He forgot about it because he was so mesmerized that he was just so passionate, you know, for, for the land of Israel, for the people of Israel, for, for the kingdom of God to come on Israel. And at the moment when Lucifer tempted him with the kingdom and people, he chose God. Woo! In his hunger, he chose God. Come on. Come on. Mark chapter 1 verse 13. 
And he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild beasts and angels attended him. Luke chapter 4 verse 1 to 2. Jesus, come on, I love this. Everyone say, full of the Holy Spirit. Today, your fasting is going to be fruitful because it's the Holy Spirit who helps you bear the fruit. Amen. Amen? Full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days and at the end of them, he was hungry. Yeah? And when his hunger was met, he traded that for a greater hunger, God. Come on. God, he said, it is written, worship the Lord and serve him only. Away from me, you enemy. Oh, come on. Are you with me? <laughs> Are you really with me? As much as we're going to pray for the nation and for India and and you know what your miracle is actually at hand I'm being honest <laughs> pastor really that's true you can have financial issues I'm telling you your miracle is at hand it is today here Amen. it is there here Amen. but the point is not that you're getting me you can pray for India, you know, you, you, you pray, it's good, it's good. But tonight's point is much more greater than this great love that you as a church have. I pray that, yes, you will be called Bangalore Revival Center, but you will be known as Jesus Revivalist. <laughs> come on, come on. Your church will have your city and your country's name, but you will be not, I don't know, man, you need to get this. David was known after the birth, his birthplace, Bethlehem. When he became king, he was known after Jerusalem, but he saw to that he died not being known as the cities that influenced him. He died a man of God, a man after God's own heart. Come on. He was tired and he refused those titles of revival. He says, revival, yes, let it be there. But I want to die after your name. After, I don't know, I want to chase after you and die like that. Woo! Come on! I don't know, do you want to just take five seconds and give God the biggest shout of praise right now? Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, open your mouth and just bless him today. Come on, Father, we need you today, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you. We need you tonight. We want you. He looked at the alabaster woman. He looked at Judas. He looked at his disciples and he said, enough. He said, enough. The poor you will always have with you, but you won't have me. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. You're getting me? Are you getting me? Are you getting me? Yes. He looked, he looked and he said, hey, you will always have that. You will have parents. He was, he was so, his, his speech sounds so, it, it looks like Jesus was out of his mind when he's talking, but it is great love talking, people. When he said, let the dead bury the dead, you, you know, if you can't hate your father and your mother and your brother, and if you can't, you know what Jesus is trying to say? <laughs> he's trying to say, you know what, you can have your love hierarchy. You can start, and you know what? It's great in the kingdom of God. Starting with you, you deny yourself, you deny your family, you deny, you reach, you come to a place where you get the city, you deny that for the nation. Yes, you will have great loves, yeah? But can you, can you love me a little more than that? Woo! You can have your love for your father and your mother. Love me more than that. Wow. 
doesn't mean go hate everyone and love me. No, he said, you can have your great love. That's the standard. But can you love me more than that? Have you considered Job, Lucifer? He's sitting in the courtroom of heaven and he's telling, ha, ha, ha. Have you considered him? He is blessed with everything. He's the greatest noble. You know, Job was a great man in the East. If you read the end of it, he was a great uh, philosopher. He was a great chief. He was almost like a king. He had everything. He's like, he has got everything, but he loves me more than all of that. And you know what Lucifer says? He puts children. And you know what? Job loves God even more than his children and his wife. Woo! <sighs> what a mediocre life we've been living, right? Get up, eat food, worry about our little tiny petty issues, get obsessed with the news, get angry, go to God, release your burden, feel good in worship, walk out. That's called prostitution with the presence. I'm sorry, did it offend you? Did it, I'm sorry, Pastor, but that is. If you're going to treat his presence for half a day of your pleasure, that is not prayer. That's prostitution with God. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? I'm sorry if it was too harsh. It is for me too. But you know what? God is calling us beyond that. Amen? And when that woman who was once a prostitute is now become passionate, <laughs> it's like she has done this for my burial. That means she loves me to the point that even when I, you know, you need to get this. God is somebody who can, there's nothing impossible for God. Amen? But he's giving a condition here. As incarnate man is telling, for something is not impossible with me, but she is ready to worship me even when I cannot do anything for her. You with me? That's why she has come to worship me while I'm still alive, but has prepared me for my death. She wants to have a relationship with a living Jesus and a dead God, and she doesn't care. She is ready to romance anything that she gets because she has found the greatest love of her life, and she is not going to lose it. Amen? Amen. Yes or no? Song of Solomon, you know, she said, no, no, the scripture is not there. You know, she says, hey, don't awaken love until it desires. Amen? Tonight, I think it's time for you to awoke, awaken your love for God. Amen? Amen? Yes or no? Yes or no? Can there be, I don't know, I, am, I, am I talking to crazy God lovers here? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Come on, let me hear you. Amen. <laughs> Woo. Can I share one story? Is that okay? Yeah? It's from the Bible. Yes? Yes? Just take two seconds and let's pray. Let's pray. Come on. Father, even as we get deeper tonight, <laughs> yes, God, we are not going to get complacent, nor are we going to be happy with where we are, Lord. We want to get deeper tonight. Amen? 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 Come on, come on, come on, come on. I want you to pray right now. Come on. Come on. Ask, ask, ask. It says, ask and keep on asking and I will open the door. If you seek, you will find. Amen? Amen? Woo! Wow. Can you read uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 16? I'm just going to tell you about a woman. I will say a woman. We're going to study about a woman, all right? Yes or no, people? They're behind me, yes? Amen? Yeah. Read that. Uh, Matthew chapter 12, sorry, Luke chapter 11, 16 to 36. It's towards the end. Come on, read with me. One, two, three, go. When an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through places seeking rest and does not find it. Yes? Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other more wicked spirits than itself and it goes and lives there and the final condition of that person is worse than the first. As Jesus was saying these things, a woman in the crowd, 
Come on. A woman in the crowd yelled and called out, Blessed is the mother who gave birth to you and nursed you. He replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. What was Jesus trying to do here? Come on. Amen. Can we read another angle to the story? Uh, if you go uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 38 to 45. Matthew chapter 12, yeah. See, there it goes, all right? Uh, the same story. Read the last line. That is how it will be with this generation. Then continue. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, who came there? Who came there? His mother. Everyone say his mother. And his brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to him, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of the Father in heaven is my mother, my sister, and my brother. Woo! Today you're going to become co-heirs with Jesus. Are you ready for it? Come on, are you ready for it? <laughs> you're, gonna, you're an heir and a co-heir. Amen? That's what the Paul says in Corinthians. He says, hey, and he's talking about a parable. You need to understand Jesus. When he's talking about a story, it's never based on a lie. Say, never based on a lie. Ah, that means these things, he saw it happen during his childhood. Probably in Nazareth, there was a father and a son who went away and came back. It becomes a parable story. You know, these things, he saw it happen and he speaks it out, all right? So when he says the story, wait, he's talking about a person who had one demon, yes? And the demon left that person because there were people who were, during, in, in Hebrew culture, there are people who chase demons out. But they come back because they don't have the power of the name of Jesus. Amen? So when they comes back, it occupies seven more demons are inside and the person is mad, right? And he tells that story and suddenly somebody from the crowd screams, hey, blessed are you and blessed is the woman who gave you birth because that woman is saying that Mary is outside. Yes? But Jesus, instead of recognizing his mother, you need to, come on, journey with me, all right? He, he look, instead of looking at his mother, he provokes her to a jealousy by telling, no, blessed rather are these people, pointing to his disciples, telling, they who do the will of God are my brother, my sister, my mother. What was Jesus doing? Amen? Amen. You're going to journey with me? Yes. Wow. Go to um, Mark chapter 16, verse 9. I'm sorry, Luke chapter 8, verse 1 to 3. Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 8, verse 1 to 3. Is it there? Can somebody read it? Luke chapter 8, verse 1 to 3. Luke chapter 8. Do you have Mark 16? Okay, you have Mark 16? Okay, it's, it should have been the other way around, all right? <laughs> Mark 16, verse 9. Can somebody read out uh, Luke chapter 8, 1 to 3, please, from your Bibles? Okay, come on. After this, Jesus traveled from one town to another. Hmm, next. Proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. Next. The twelve were with him and come on. And there were some women. Everyone say women. You know how, what kind of women? They were cured of evil spirits. Next. Come on. So there was one among them called Mary called Magdalene, how many demons she had? Seven demons. Seven demons. Mm -hmm. Joanna, the wife of Susa, mm -hmm. the manager of Herod. She is the manager of Herod's pa uh, palace. Next. Susanna and, many Susanna and many others. Hey, journey with me, all right? These women, and you know what they did? They paid from their pocket. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. You understood? These women were rich. Okay? They had wealth. And those days you are not rich until you're old. Because you get into a business from the time, you know, and you don't get to travel around like that because you have your own families. 
journey with me. All right? But there was a one I want to pay attention is Mary had how many demons? Seven demons in her. Hmm. The parable says there was one demon, it left, came back with seven. Yes? Could it be her story? And immediately after that, he says, no, not my mother of my birth, but this mother. They are my mother, my brother, and my sister. You're with me. Journey with me. Yes? I just want to tell you a story. Do you know Nihal, this fat boy? Yeah, Nihal? Um, you know I've lost my mother, right? Okay, for those who do not know, I lost my mother two and a half years ago. Yeah? And she was definitely my great love. I've never loved anybody so much. And, but when time got difficult between <laughs> choosing her and God, I did choose God and it was very difficult. But she died believing in what I did. Amen? And she was my number one supporter. Uh, I remember second graduation, uh, during the graduation night, she came and hugged me and she said, I support you in what you're doing. You know? So God is preparing her for her time and everything. And after her going away, usually I don't give this place of mother to anybody else. You with me? But Nihal's mother, she always messages me. She's crazy about me. And I don't understand. Sometimes it gets, huh, what's wrong with her? Sometimes I've thought, what's wrong with this woman? Now I've, asked, I've had fought, I fought with her, what's wrong with you? She's like, don't give me the place of mother. At least give me the place of your grandmother. I'll be your grandmother. I'm like, kya bachpana, you know? If I go to Hyderabad, even if I'm busy, like a tight schedule, busy, and if I don't visit her, she cries. She literally throws a tantrum like a child. For me. And who am I in her life? There's a story I, I love to share about her is that she, in her previous job, because of a lot of wrong things, uh, not what she did, but her company had did, did to her, she was jailed for some time. All right? And for a woman to be jailed, mother, it's not easy, right? She was jailed and uh, when she came out of all that and there were so many thousands of cases on her and like she had lost her heart on God. <laughs> but her son, this fat boy, cute fellow, came for worship internship. And she, and this fellow is a fat boy and he, for him he can't tolerate hunger. So, as a mother, she's sitting there and she's telling, I hope people know that he can't tolerate hunger. At dinner times, at lunch time, she cries. One day she was telling me and she wept. Because she's like, he can't tolerate hunger. A mother's pain, all right? <laughs> With me? Yeah? And so, to see if her baby is doing fine, she would come to this online thing, what we do at Face to Face, just to see if he's around. Yeah? Journey with me, right? And she would see that her boy is playing the drums, her boy is walking around, you know, he's worshipping. She would see small two, three glimpses of it. And in the process, her great love was Nihal. In the process, she got, she fell back in love with God. Watching the worship and getting ministered by it. And one of the persons that God used in her life was me. And I didn't even know, now I understand the crazy madness of gratefulness. You know what I'm telling? And now she doesn't see her son in the camera, but she's regular and she's crazily watching and craving. Today, she's acquitted from all her cases. Her family, uh, Nihal's, uh, the debts are going to get cleared. She's got a new job. You know, her honor is restored. You know what I'm telling? But all this is not her testimony. Her testimony is, I'm crazy after God. Lazarus, my testimony is that, man, I came to life. People are coming to see me. He cared. He gave it two hoots. He reclined on Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. For most worship leaders over here. Come on, worship leaders. Come on, lift your hands. Worship leaders, Bible teachers, preachers, pastors. I want to see your hands. Lift your hands. Yeah. You know what's the greatest thing on your life? Your anointing. You will never trade that and you should never trade that. I've heard Cha saying to so many people, what I carry is not for sale. Don't try to buy me. And he's chosen to go in demeaning places than 
to bigger places because God asked him to go to lower places and lesser places. Amen? Amen. But the only thing as men of God, the only thing in my life, Rachel told this about me, all right? And it's such a shame and also a praise. He looked at me and he said, Nixon, you are a shame to every institution on earth except worship. <laughs> I'm like, did you just insult me or lift me up? And you know what? That's true. When we reach pray, this crazy place, all we have is left in us is our anointing. Amen? But that woman was willing to even lay that down for him. Come on. I'm talking to pastors. I'm talking to worship leaders. You have left with only your anointing, which will take you to places, countries, I don't know where. I don't know even crazy levels of gifting. But can you reach a place of being so madly obsessed with him that you are going to even take that anointing that you're left with and just break it on his head and say, I want you. Come on. I'm talking to someone today. Talking to someone today. Can I talking to someone today? Yes. You're questioning. Can such a love relationship happen between God and man? Yes. Yes. Yes, on the sixth day, God looked at the clay. He looked at sundown time. He breathed into Adam, his life. Adam woke up mesmerized by the face of God before him. And they entered Shabbat, rest. And God rested not alone, but with his man. Your purpose in life was to love God. And to love him not like that. Love him crazily. Amen, Pastor? Yeah? Amen? 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 Come on. Yeah? This woman, Mary Magdalene, just like Nihal's mother. Amen? She was, she was driven out and her demons were cleared and she is now crazy after Jesus. Yeah? It says if she was traveling with a company of older women, she could have been old. Just like Nihal's mother. Alright? <laughs> and I love this about her. She saw Jesus die. Journey with me. All right, I'll wait. Stop everything that you're doing, people. Everyone, stop everything that you're doing. All your attention here, all right? Yes? Do I have your attention? She saw the love of her life die. She was in an agape love relationship with this man. Not Eros. Agape. It's higher which has no conditions, <laughs> which has no limitations. And she was in love with this man. She saw him die and she saw him hang his head down. Something happened at that time, all right? Read Matthew chapter 27, verse 5. You with me, people? Yes? Is it there? Read with me. And when Jesus had cried out, Mary is seeing, all right? Again, in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook. Come on, say that. The earth shook. The rocks split and the tombs broke open. You know, Jesus was crucified in an area full with tombs, all right? All the tombs broke open because of the great earthquake, all right? The bodies of many holy people who had died there were raised to life. When did they come to life? They came out of the tomb after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. What a phenomenon. Crazy, right? Which means the body, that means the spirit of Moses, Enoch, Adam, all of them came alive with Jesus on the third day. But what happened? Wait. And they went into the holy city. Journey with me. Next. When the centurion saw this, right, come on. They went into the holy city. Journey with me? Yes? Hmm. Something very odd about the scripture? Is it? Yeah? Wow. (laughs) 
it says when when the women saw jesus die all right it was sabbath right <laughs> and so they went into seclusion and began to worship by preparing an aroma spices for the lord to anoint his body okay and so as they were and they saw i like the way mary says she and somebody else saw jesus being laid in the tomb and joseph and nicodemus comes and they anoint jesus with strong myrrh all right to preserve the body so that it will not decay for three days because it was a long sabbath everyone say long sabbath so she's sitting there and she's watching because it's sundown and they had to push the body in jesus is anointed with myrrh mordecai yes hmm journey with me she goes home and you know what when you have a great love <laughs> you forget to eat and drink yeah yes or no yes song of songs chapter 5 verse 1 says i lay on my bed All right can somebody read that song of songs chapter 5 Finny somebody journey with me All right journey with me chapter 5 verse 1 my my okay i'm sorry can you see the read the scripture where she lays on her bed and she listens to her ga- her lover knocking the door okay there's a prophecy in song of songs everyone say prophecy so she's lying there and she's telling i lay and in the night i hear my lover who she's so madly obsessed that she is hearing the lover all right and i can hear him near by the door knob i can i can smell the mud dripping from the door knob so i wake up but he went all right you with me so i went out in the night while it was still dark looking for him the watchmen they beat me but i was asking them tell me where have you laid tell me where is my lover let me find him amen isn't that the same story mary magdalene did are you with me It says on the third day before the sun could come up jesus came to life all right i want i want this for you when adam came to life <sighs> he saw god and he fell madly in love with god and they rested amen yes but when jesus came to life <laughs> holy spirit come on pray with me everyone come on pray in your spirit right now shukriya ra ba 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 se kriya ra ba 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 shukr when jesus when he came to life he woke up and he became living and he could not move because just like the face of god was staring at adam the love of this woman was staring at him for three days and three nights she lay on that bed you with me come on she lay on that bed and she's like i want him i want him i love him i'm waiting when it is so that i can go to him you with me so much so that she was craving for him so much that even before jesus could come let me tell you jesus was about to fulfill the fruit the first fruit right he was supposed to take the people of the dead and give it to god pay attention come on worship team but what happened is the minute jesus came alive and all the spirits with him came alive he could not go ahead he had to tell to all the spirits wait a minute i have to go show my face to somebody and come wow come on you know you need to understand this jesus is now not man he is god when he came back alive he is god that means he can be everywhere know everything and is all powerful at the same time but the minute he came alive one woman's love caught his attention he said father for a little while i don't want this glory ah come on <laughs> i know there is this great love of mine which is heaven but i have a greater love and she is calling me she is my church come on come on 
come on, come on, come on. And he tells these souls, hey, you know what? I have things to do. And they go wandering in the city to see. And you know, these spirits are appearing to people. People saw Moses, people saw David, people saw all these people because they're wandering. Because Jesus is busy telling one woman, I'm waiting for you, come. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell is he, he looked at heaven's courts right let me tell you about heaven's courts the judgment happens there every day yes there's father sitting on the judgment seat and he's judging the kings of the earth his judgments happening every day and they are waiting for this great judgment and he's telling i'm gonna delay it for some time because there's this woman who is madly loving me and father she's loving me like how you are loving me you know what just wait for a while let me visit her Woo! Come on, come on. She comes, she's looking for him and he's like, Mary. <laughs> you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? <laughs> a woman, an obscure woman could love a, and romance a dead Jesus in such a way that he couldn't help but just give in to her. You know you can ambush God tonight? Hey, come on. Do you know you can ambush God tonight? Yeah. You know when you lift up the city and in, in a truly sacrificial way, when you, when, if you can have a great love for this country and for the city and for the people and families, that's why you are here. Let me tell you, others, trust me, you, none of you are going to be here. Yes, Pastor? They love, you all love this city. You all love this city. You love this nation. You love what you, what ha what's happening in the history of this land matters to you. That's why you're here. Yes? But you know what? <laughs> you have a capacity to love God even crazier than that. For a little while, you will get your justice. You will get your petitions done. But can you pause the courtroom of heaven and say, God, today I want you more than that. I don't know. I think I'm done. I want you more than that. I want you more than that. There's a testimony that God tells for Moses, which I want to tell for all of you. Amen? Amen? When God looks at you, this is your benediction. Amen? When there's a prophet in the land, I speak to the prophet in dreams and in visions, but not so with you. I want God to tell that to you. With you, I speak face to face, and you will see my form. That is the love relationship we have. Amen? I've gone mad. Can we go mad for Jesus tonight? <laughs> Come on, can we all stand up? Go mad for Jesus. You know, leave your Bibles. Leave your phones. Leave your song list. Come worship him. Come. Leave your songs. Leave your prayer requests. Yes, they will be met. But for now, cause your eyes to be fixed on the King. Come on. I just want to read out one thing for you. It'll shake you. It will shake you. Deuteronomy 17, 8 to 12. If you have your Bibles open, come on, let's read that, come on. Come on, come on. Jesus, O oh Lord God. Come on, come on. This is a situation in our country, all right? Amen? It's worst. So read that. If cases come before your courts, everyone say courts that are too difficult for you to judge, right? 
whether bloodshed is there bloodshed in the land yes or no yes. does it bother you yes. amen lawsuits come on property grabbing lawsuits yes yeah assault is it happening is it happening talk to me yes and when they are too difficult to judge what do you do you take them to the place the lord your god will choose woo this is a secret for the revival in this land amen wait for it all right so where do you go you go to the levitical priests amen every levitical priest here lift up your hands come on you are above the government hey wake up you are above the government today with government what government has no solution for you and i we have a solution for amen and you know where is it it's in the courts of the lord woo it is going to be you know our constitution is going to be you know going to be happening in churches amen i believe the parliament the rajya sabha in i believe it it's going to become the greatest church building of our nation i don't know if you want to believe me or not i don't care but i'm going to say it go to the levitical priests and to the judge who sits in office at the time amen who's in office today here pastor priji amen yeah in the same way and see inquire of them and they will give you the verdict woo amen Do you know the verdict for assault murder all these atrocities that's happening in the country today is in your mouth pastor am i lying am i lying it's a truth it's in your mouth amen so the next was you must act according to the decisions they give you at the place the lord will choose be careful to do everything they instruct you to do amen this place called the courts of the lord even say courts of the lord where you are anointed where you find your great love the many loves where every need of yours is met you with me yeah it's going to be a political powerhouse in the spirit amen amen, amen. amen. wow Levitical priest come on lift your hands But you know why this these kind of court rooms are going to be powerful <laughs> because he says i will anoint somebody to be my son amen and that person not as a king but as a son will build my court room amen, amen. jesus said i will oh people who are mothers and brothers and my sons come on come on come on are you co-heirs with jesus tonight is there a relationship if you call yourself his brother his mother his lover his son his daughter then it is on your head an anointing to build a court for the lord Woo! but the beauty of this court is this psalm 65 verse 4 Jesus oh. Come on we're just going to go ahead Psalm 65 verse 4 is it there Prabhu Yeshua There's a series of psalms come on read that Why don't you stretch your hand towards somebody and just bless them Blessed are those who chose to bring what who choose and bring near to live in your courts amen you are filled with the good things of your house of your holy temple amen read psalm 92 verse 13 come on planted in the house of the lord they will flourish in the courts of the lord woo psalm 135 sorry zechariah chapter 3 verse 7 come on this is what the lord almighty says if you walk in obedience to me and keep my requirements then you will govern my house and my charge of my courts and i will give you a place among these standing here come on come on come on woo next verse psalm 135 
Come on, praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Him, you servants of the Lord. You who minister in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of the Lord. Wow, 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 wow. Read, read. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praise to Him, name, for that is pleasant. Wait. There's a sudden shift in these prayers. As you administer justice, like Moses, like David, like Esther, you know what happens? Suddenly in between justice, you become madly in love with the justice giver. Amen? And your songs change and it becomes, my soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out. Come on, come on. And for the living God. In the, in the, and you go on to say, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Come on, sing with me. I will rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Come on, next, next. Enjoy his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise give thanks Woo! in the courts of the house of the Lord in your midst Jerusalem praise the Lord your justice will become your love language towards God come on come on come on you and I have the right to stop the courtroom of heaven and say to the judge sitting on the throne, I love you. Amen. <laughs> take a little moment, God. Let me take care of you. Let me host you. Let me love on you. Oh, God. Oh, God. I want to worship you. Not because of what you did or what you're doing. For who you are. Come on, you don't need a man right now. You need to become overwhelmingly crazy, obsessed with the love of God. Come on, prayer warriors. Oh, yeah. Open your mouth, open your mouth. Sing out your love language to God. Abandon your songs. Don't bring your songs to Him. Bring yourself. Bring yourself. Oh God. Come on, worship Him. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Oh God. For a little while, love on Him. Love on Him. Love on Him. Let time pass by. You catch hold of him right now. You catch hold of him. Oh, come on, come on. Don't be led by man. Be led by the Spirit of God. Yeshua. Come on, like Mary. Pray for him. Delay the courts of heaven right now, God. I want you. I want you. I want you, Lord. I want you. I want you. I want you. Come on, sing your own song to Him. Shout out your own love poetry, your own love language to God. Yes, you are. Woo! Anybody crazy for Jesus tonight? Oh, Yeshua, Yeshua, for a little while, I see a cloud in this room, come on, I see a cloud in this room, he's right here, I can see a cloud in this room, worship him, worship him, come on, come on, abandon your anointing, everything, oh God, I love justice, God, but I love you more than that, God. Woo! I 
love justice. I love hope for this nation. But I love you more than that, Lord. I love you, God. I love you, God. Come on, stretch out your hand. There's an anointing coming your way. Come on, stretch it. Receive it. Stretch out. Stretch out your hand. I love you, God. Anointing of healing. But you will fall in love with the healer. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come on, come on, don't keep quiet. Call, call his name, call his name. I'm not going to lead you now. You are going to lead yourself. You're going to lead yourself. Here we go, here we go, here we go. One, two, three, go, run. Pray.